Is Apple's studio display worth $1,600? And how much better is it than LG's Ultrafine 5K, which is the same exact panel that is in all of the 5K 20 inch iMacs? Well, today we will find out. We're gonna compare all of the differences, including some surprising things that you guys probably don't expect. And yes, there are ways that this nice big display actually gets beat out by the LG 5K that's been out now for about six years. Now I absolutely love this little cloth handle up there instead of plastic. Just feels so much nicer. Makes you feel better about spending $1,600 on a display. And I also really like the way Apple set up this box. Actually, let me flip it over here where you open this thing up just like the Mac Studio and then the edges literally just pop down. Take a look at this, it actually gives you a little instructions. Bam, that is some origami right there. Bam, nice and easy. Let's set this down. And I assume that inside this package is probably the cable. Let's see. Yep, we got a cable in here. Ah, okay, that is our Thunderbolt cable for the connection. And of course, for you sticker lovers, Apple has you covered. Now, this Thunderbolt cable is very nice. It has a braided cable finish on the outside, but look how short this thing is. Oh my goodness, the Thunderbolt cable comes with the LG 5K. It looks like to be, yeah, literally twice as long. Now, it looks like on the back of the Mac Studio is where we have some additional thick, really thick packaging here. And that has our power cable. Oh yeah, the power cable is non-removable, which is such a crazy thing that Apple is doing. Why would you not just have one of those magnetic connections that comes even on the $1,300 iMac that you have a full computer with instead of display? Why go with this route? Of course, the LG Ultrafine has a standard power cable, so you can replace it if it goes bad. And now let's go ahead and peel off this really nice recyclable covering on here. Bam, that is off. Look at that. This is why you want a studio display. You don't want that plastic. You want the solid aluminum beautiful design and nice materials. Now, one thing that stands out to me right away is just how low this display is, but the degree of adjustability with that all aluminum hinge is quite good. And that hinge is really nice, very easy to adjust. Now, comparing it to the LG 5K, here is the LG at its lowest setting. So it actually does go lower if you want it. And as far as tilt, this thing actually has a very similar amount of adjustability. So definitely the iMac is not winning. And of course the iMac doesn't adjust height-wise unless you spend another $400 for their little arm thing that allows you to raise the height. Whereas the LG could be adjusted out of the box up to this height, which is a little bit higher than I normally need it to. And then all the way down here. So that is very nice. Now, what about the stability? So here we have an all aluminum design. It is wide, this wide arm. Look what happens when I shake this table a little bit. <laughs> the LG is going all over the place while the studio display is barely, barely moving. I use this display for about four years ever since it came out, and that is the number one thing that really annoyed me, is just how wobbly this thing is. Now with the LG Ultrafine 5K, you can actually take off this plate here, Oof. and then you can actually vase mount it. So if you wanna buy your own arm, or a wall mount or whatever, you could do that and get a nicer stand for it. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, with the studio display, you could actually get it with a vase mount and it's the same price, but then you don't get the stand. Now, as far as build quality, you cannot compare these. We have an all aluminum, beautiful design that's gonna look great compared to an all plastic, not super cheap feeling other than the stand, but it's not a great design. It's not gonna look great on your desk. It's gonna make it look worse. And with that, of course, we have these bezels that don't look great. Everything stays stands out. And the actual panel just has a plastic glossy coating over here. And we're gonna take a look at reflectivity in just a bit. 
compared to with the Mac Studio, we have this full sheet of glass that is flat. We do have bezels here that are a little bit smaller, especially here on the bottom, uh, at least it looks like it compared to the LG 5K, but it's all nice and glass. Now, as far as reflectivity, I did not purchase the nano texture coating for an extra $300 because it makes the display look less sharp and less detailed. But with that said, the LG 5K looks almost like a mirror until you see that it's actually the display. It is very glossy uh, and there's a lot of reflections. Now, even though I just have the standard studio display, when you look over at that one, even though you do see reflections, it's a lot more dispersed, not as bright, not as sharp and colorful. So Apple definitely has much better coatings on the studio display compared to LG with this 5K panel. And now I have both of them connected to my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Let me show you what the differences are here. You can see both the internal display and then the LG Ultrafine and the studio display. And with the LG Ultrafine, you can still select your color profile. You don't see any HDR, just like you don't with the studio display because unlike the built-in one or the 6K display, it does not go enough brightness. It doesn't have mini LED to have that, but you do see this automatically adjust brightness option because it does have those sensors built into the display, whereas the Ultrafine does not. Now, as far as brightness, the Ultrafine goes up to 500 nits, just like the IMAX, just like the 6K display. So let's turn that up right there. And I adjusted that front camera so it's not being blown out. But the studio display will actually go up to 600 nits. Now, to that camera, it doesn't look like it's much of a difference to my eyes. I could see a bigger difference than probably what you guys could see. And the studio display is actually one of the few that goes up that much for regular usage. Like I said, the pro display is also 500 nits. And with this newer, nicer coatings, the anti-reflectivity ones, you're gonna be able to fight any sort of issues as far as you know windows in your room or anything like that. So I probably would not pay for that matte coating. Now, one thing that is very interesting is the difference in contrast and the ability for HDR. I have the same exact 8K HDR video opener here. We're actually playing it back in 4K, so it's oversampled, but only the studio display allows you to play back in HDR. So the extra 100 nits of brightness gives you that ability, whereas the LG 5K display only plays back in SDR. Now, taking a look at the quality difference, it is noticeable. Uh, it looks like the glass does make it a little bit sharper, especially when I was looking at the icons, but contrast is substantial. The studio display has a lot more contrast than I expected. With that, I also see highlights with the 600 nit screen. We're getting a lot more pop in the cloud. So overall, the image does look quite a bit better and having the HDR ability is really nice to have. Yeah, look at those clouds right there with the snow border. Uh, we do have more clipping, less highlight detail. Even though this is not a mini LED screen, it preserves more detail and you get more pop. It's actually pretty surprising. And overall, I have to be honest with you guys, I was not expecting this much of a difference in terms of the contrast, the reflectivity, and the image with them both being 5K panels. People were saying that, hey, this is the same screen, they just up the brightness a little bit. But if you take the same screen and you just up the brightness, you're gonna get worse contrast. In this case, we're getting better brightness and better contrast. And just to make sure, here is an SDR video. So no difference in terms of going for those ultra brights and extra contrast added. Uh, and here you could still see, especially, uh, you know, right here, close up, I'm seeing that we do have better contrast with, with this new display. So it is definitely an updated panel. So it's very cool to see Apple improving on what they've had previously in the iMac. We have less reflections, we have better brightness, a little bit more detail thanks to the glass and better contrast as well. So a lot more differences than I expected. But now let's go ahead and switch over to the built-in speakers and the webcams. Both these displays have vents on the bottom, but the iMac has them along the whole bottom, which allows air to come in, and then also has them up top, so hot air can come out, whereas the LG does not. Now, both have speakers that are stereo, one on the left, one on the right, so let's go ahead and compare the quality. Apple said they sound amazing, but let's go ahead and take a listen for ourselves.
All right, guys, let me know your thoughts as far as the sound quality. Now, what I will say is the LG does get louder. Based off of my Apple Watch here, it does get a couple of decibels louder. Uh, some of that is the highs. Um, those always peak higher as far as decibel meeting meters, but it definitely gets louder. And it also has pretty dang good bass. When I got this display, I was really surprised by how good it sounded. Uh, with that said, the studio is definitely another level. The highs are toned down a little bit like Apple has been doing with their latest you know, computers, the MacBooks, um, but it, this sounds nice and natural, very balanced, and the bass gets deep. Just like the MacBook Pro, they said this has a noise canceling woofers, uh, has six total speakers. It definitely gets nice and low. It's a whole nother level for movies, videos, music, and it sounds very accurate, very tight. Whereas the LG sounds a little bit more loose, kind of like a stereo that can get loud, but doesn't have that richness and tightness. I wouldn't complain too much about this one, but the studio is definitely on another level. And now let's go ahead and compare the webcams. This is the LG Ultrafine's quality of the 1080p webcam with its dual front facing microphones. It is shockingly good for a six year old monitor. It was really good back then. It is still pretty good right now. And this is the quality of Apple's new studio display, both the 1080p webcam and the new microphones. Now, this is also a 1080p webcam, but it is an ultra wide, which you're not seeing right now because in any application that doesn't support center stage, the software that will digitally crop in and out depending on how many, pe how many people are here, well, it just crops in and instead of being 1080p, it is actually less than 720p, which is why you're seeing so much noise and lack of detail in my face. Now, it is a brighter image. It is more flat compared to the LG but it just does not look as good. I wish they just stuck with the regular 1080p webcam, just like you have on the latest IMAX. But you guys let me know your thoughts on it and the thoughts of the audio quality. Now the next difference with these displays are the USB type C ports on the back. Both these monitors have three of them. So these are both hubs that you can connect SSDs to, any other kind of devices, SD card readers. We use this all the time, uh, but we do have a difference. The studio display will actually transfer at twice the speeds, 10 gigabit per second compared to five. So if you have an ultra fast SSD like we do, you should get a lot more speeds. Now I connected my ultra fast SSD to the LG 5K and it actually won't show up. Either it requires too much power maybe, uh, or possibly it just doesn't really wanna work with that five gigabit per second speed. My old SSD would get about 350 megabytes per second connected to the LG, where it would get 900 connected directly to my MacBook. So let's go ahead and try it out with the studio display. So it looks like we got just over 900 for the right speed, and interestingly about 624 for the read speed. Usually they're right around the same. Uh, I'm not sure if it's this SSD or what, but we'll do some more testing for the full review. Either way, this thing we was actually able to connect it and it's running it two to three times faster than if it would have been connected to the LG 5K. So that is definitely a big benefit. So there you guys go. Is the studio display worth $1,600? Well. I think so. The speakers sound a lot better, the reflectivity, the display quality, the brightness, the build quality, it's definitely on another level. And being that this came out six years later and we have inflation and the higher cost of manufacturing, all aluminum, faster ports, all of that, and compared to this one where it came out for 1300 bucks six years ago, it's a much nicer display. So if you have the money, I would definitely go for this display. You won't be disappointed as long as you don't need anything for HDR as far as actually grading that. For SDR content, creating videos, photos, all of that, this thing's gonna be amazing. It's a great all-in-one display. Uh, it has a lot of different capabilities and it looks great. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys wanna see the comparison against the 6K XDR for six grand with that stand, click that circle above so you guys can subscribe and help support uh, and help us get to our million subscriber goal, which we've had for a while. Check out one of those great videos right there. This is Max and we'll see you in the next video.